Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys this look and pretty much just talking about all the brands that have launched foundation shades or concealer shades or just anything that involves a shade range in general in 2018. Some brands that just completely missed the mark and some brands that actually did a really good job. So let's just hop straight into it. It's gonna be a very interesting video. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to be using the new Beauty Blender foundation because of this video. I did this video a while back. I think it was... I can't remember, but it was a few months back and I talked about how the lack of shade range was there. They did have my shade, but the fact that they didn't have all the other shades in between, it was kind of like a hop, skip, and a jump to the end. It didn't sit well with me. It was just kind of like, if you're not gonna have shades for all of us, then don't even bother, you know? But now they've come out with more shades. This topic, like I just said, is something that I've been thinking about for a while now because with the fact that a lot of companies do make this mistake and they can continue to make this mistake is it something that we're just willing to let go and be like okay we're gonna keep giving you guys a chance and a chance and a chance with beauty blender they originally came out with 32 shades and obviously the shade range was not the best especially on the deeper side of the spectrum and then they came back and they're like yeah it was for the medium skin tones it was mainly supposed to like cater towards medium skin tones and i think that was really where they like made the biggest mistake in my mind beauty blender revolutionized the beauty industry so much so like the beauty blender is like literally a staple in everyone's kit everyone's makeup routine I actually guys on Instagram actually what do you guys think can these brands actually redeem themselves if so then what can they do to do redeem themselves it's not just beauty blender it just happens that beauty blender was the last one to extend their shades at this point in time that I felt like I really wanted to address it and talk about it um, this has happened with Tarte it has happened with YSL um, it's happened with Jouer. I do think that with some brands, like to me, there's just no wiggle room. Like you did something that I just absolutely don't agree with. I just cannot get behind. But if I'm gonna be completely real, right? If I was to cancel every single brand, right? That didn't have a product with the shade that I can use, meaning like they have a foundation, but they don't have a concealer. They have a highlight, but they don't have a bronzer. A majority of the mainstream brands would be canceled and I would pretty much not have any brands that I could use of course there's some ethical things that make me cancel a brand for me I feel like they would need to like really evaluate like what happened you know what what went wrong before we even released this foundation was it an internal problem where we didn't have enough diversity um in the higher ups to the way they felt comfortable to say hey like i feel i definitely feel like something's missing here i don't think it's a good look we are in 2018 i think we should reevaluate if it was the fact that a lot of companies are jumping onto this 40 shades or 40 shades or more feeling like they're gonna get left behind. If it was that, then I definitely think that it's better to hold off and not rush it because what's gonna happen is what just happened. And like, like someone already said, you just won't have the same respect that you used to have, you know? And that's that respect is super important. That's, that respect is what made the hype for that foundation launch so exciting, you know? And everyone was ready for it. And then I also kind of get annoyed with the, oh, like, we need to discuss with brands how important this is. They know. Come on now. If you are in the beauty industry, if you are a brand owner, a brand representative, a brand CEO, you know. You know. I'm sorry. And if you don't know, there needs to be some reevaluation there. I'm gonna go ahead and conceal with the Cover FX Power Play Concealer. I'm using the P Deep 5 on the outer perimeter of my little triangle. And then I go in with N Deep 5, which, just, which is just a little bit lighter. And I put that inside the triangle, like right there. It was kind of um, interesting to see the mixed responses that I got. And it was also interesting to see, see the different races that the responses came from. Like who felt like it's just unacceptable or it's a mistake, you know, mistakes happen. 
but you know in 2018 this mistake shouldn't be happening i think really what needs to happen is i think maybe a lot of people of color maybe might not be higher up in the internal side of the business as far as like maybe like product development meetings product things like that um also what Too Faced did with Jackie was really good as far as like them acknowledging the fact that they did not have the resources to pretty much come out with the foundations that they needed to come out with you know Too Faced and Tarte were on my side eye list for the longest time especially as part of my darkest shade series so i just did my brows off camera really quickly because you know they just take too long for eyes i'm going to be using the pat mcgrath mothership eyeshadow palette that gold though i don't know why something about gold always just attracts me when it comes to eyeshadows but then i don't ever like it as a highlight so this palette looks like it has some good shades but most of them are shimmers so I'm gonna use like a companion palette to go with it since there's only two matte shades in there. I'm gonna use this BH Cosmetics Ultra Matte 42 color eyeshadow palette. So since this is a chatty video, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my eyes. If I miss anything, any of the steps, I'll leave them down below in the description. Another thing that I feel like is very, um, for lack of a better word, annoying is Companies trying to jump on what they think is trendy. Um, unfortunately, the fact that inclusivity and so is so important right now, uh, people are making it a trend and making it seem like it's the trend, which is not inclusivity. And um, the fact that there is a lack of inclusivity is something that a lot of us with deeper skin tones have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So to us, it's not a trend. So sometimes when we hear it being called trendy or the new wave or um, we see companies just doing it just because they think that it's something that they need to do not something that they want to do it kind of like puts a really bad taste in my mouth about that brand um, one brand that i feel like is very guilty about this is it cosmetics it's unfortunate because like a lot of these brands, you can tell that they're not genuine. You can tell that they're just trying to do it just to do it. And I've actually been approached by a few of these brands to like do a review for them or do some sort of collaboration with them. And I've kind of just turned them down because it just, this is not a trend for me. This is not hype, this is not hip, this is not like something that's gonna like go away in like a six months or a year from now. Like my skin is gonna stay the same for the rest of my life. And I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So I've definitely turned down quite a few um, sponsorships that just did not fit. They just did not work. Whether they did have a shade and it just doesn't, it just rubbed me the wrong way and it's just something that didn't sit well with me. I've definitely turned them down. Like I think in January this year they came out with a foundation. It had 12 shades. And of course, in 2018, they got they got it. They got dragged for it, of course. But then I guess later on this year they decided to come out with like um, 48 shades of concealers. And they were like, we're the biggest concealer line. We have the largest concealer line. We have the most inclusive concealer line. And I'm just like, you could just tell. You could just tell that there was nothing genuine about that. And it just did not sit well with me. And I was just like, okay, well, you know what? It's brands just trying to hop on what they think is trendy right now, it really will backfire in your face because at the end of the day, you did not do the groundwork, you did not do the due diligence. How am I gonna use your 48 shades of concealer with no foundation? How does that work? That does not mean that I don't want brands to be inclusive. I just think that it needs to come from a place where you need to understand why it's so important and what your customers are gonna be getting from it. So in the BH Cosmetics palette, I think I'm gonna go into these two shades, this green and this blue right here. This eye is like my good eye. This eye always just blends much better and just looks much better. I hate that. Do you guys have a good eye where you can just see it and do it easily on this eye it's always such a struggle i don't know why i actually did this yesterday for the first time and surprisingly it actually worked but it did make my under eyes just a tad bit drier than i would like but if it keeps glitter from my face i'll try it let's go in with the pat mcgrath i think i'm going to use this shade right here Yes. 
Going in with that blue shade for the bottom lash line. While I wait for my lashes to dry, I'm gonna use the Estee Lauder, this Estee Lauder blush in the shade Naughty. And it's this really orange blush right here. A lot of you guys are asking me what brush I was using for blush the other day, and it's a Pro Flawless Light Powder Brush from Sephora. That's what it looks like right here. It's really nice. It's kind of like has the perfect shape for blush, especially if you have like really round cheeks like I do. It's good. I think it has a little bit of a sheen to it too. So yeah, that's pretty much what I really wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, about what do you guys think about brands and what do you guys think that they can be forgiven for. But we're gonna definitely leave in 2018 because I just don't wanna see no more of it in 2019 is brands using black outrage for promotion. I think that that is just so ethically disgusting. That's the one thing that'll cancel a brand for me. Just downright done. I don't even want to think about it. I will never ever think about it again if I if I see something like that. I'm using the Fenty Beauty Metallic Powder as a highlighter. So I've been watching all the Game of Thrones seasons since all the shows are like on hiatus or whatever. I watch it on my spare time. But recently I've been seeing a lot of like something called Bird Box. I think it's a movie, but I'm not sure. Um, I've seen all the memes and it's kind of like, it looks like a creepy show and almost like a scary movie. So let me know what it is. Like if you guys have seen it, is it a scary movie? Is it worth seeing? Cause I've seen mixed reviews. I've seen people saying that like it was overhyped. I think I'm gonna watch it tonight. So let me know what it is, what I should prepare for. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe if you have not already. Don't forget to hit the like button down below and turn on your notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. Lots of love and I'll see you guys next time.